Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today's Friday and I was going to do a junction video of a bunch of different stuff and I think uh, today we're going to go over just a couple different items. So let's first go over uh, some of the chemicals that I tend to use on the day in day out. So that you know probably round about what you should have in your shop. So let's take a look at that now. So these are just some of the items I use day in and day out. We have some of your go-tos like you know guys, I love Loctite. I love Loctite. I love rubbing alcohol. I use rubbing alcohol all the time. I know this is 70%. That's because that's what they stock here in the hospital very commonly. Isopropyl 100% or 99% is the best for electronics and for cleaning. But I use 70% at the moment. This guy right here. I scored several cans of this stuff. They have it down in Central Sterile and Central Supply. This stuff is absolutely fantastic. You see right here, it says it's a lubricant oil and alcohol. And they use this for high speed hand pieces, etc. This stuff is absolutely fantastic. So, you can see it comes out of this little nozzle. And it does lubricate, but it dries a very solid film. It's kind of slippery. This is such an excellent oil. We use this for a lot of different stuff. If you have let's say some casters that are uh, acting up, spray a little bit of this in there. The alcohol helps dissolve a lot of the gunk that's in there and it also lubricates. The important part of using this type of stuff is that, as you guys know, a lot of petroleum products are frowned upon in um, the presence of oxygen because, uh, you know, the whole fires thing. But this stuff here, it, it tends to not leave an oily residue and uh, it tends to kind of be cl really clean. So we love this stuff. I use it all the time around the shop on all sorts of different stuff. Um, I can't say enough good stuff about it. This Panna Spray Plus. So it acts like a cleaner and a lubricant all in one and it doesn't leave a residue. Good stuff guys, if you can use it, use it. I know a lot of biomeds are going to criticize me about this one, but there are times when an open flame in and around uh, a hospital is going to be a good thing and it's going to save you a lot of time. This guy here lives on my bench. I use this for all sorts of stuff. If you need to expand a piece of metal, if you have to uh, work out a fastener that broke off or even one that's, that's uh, stuck. A, a torch. Anybody that's worked around metal knows that a torch is going to come in handy once or twice. We also use it for stripping back insulation. Uh, we can use uh, a torch for heating up hose just so it softens and you can get over a hose barb. I mean there's so many uses for a torch it's not even funny. And you can see here I keep a mini torch in my, my toolkit all the time. This guy, I actually just had to use, what, yesterday morning? I had a refrigerator, a laboratory refrigerator, that uh, I needed to heat shrink some, some uh, spade connectors, some crimp connectors, and I was behind this guy, and there's no place even remotely close to hook up a um, soldering iron or a hot air station. So that's when this guy comes in handy. If you have to do some heat shrink tube out in the field on something that is uh, a little remote, sometimes you have to burn off. Let's say you got something that's starting to uh, strip out. You can use this uh, to, to melt it away. Uh, let's say some poly rope, you know how it likes to fray? Just torch it real quick so it, it kind of solidifies. I cannot tell you how many times I've used a mini torch in the field. It's such a plus and it goes in the theme of this video because I have butene. 
People are like, why do you have butane here in your shop? Well, I have it because of torches. And there are times when you could use a, a handy little torch. Like this little, uh, what the heck is this guy? A mag torch. So, I keep butane. Let's go over to some of the other chemicals I keep. Uh, you guys have probably seen this stuff right here. This is a, a really good grade of silicone lubricant. I know it says level one on there, but almost all hospitals and biomed shops have these guys just floating around. I keep one of these in my tool bag. Because it's a silicone lubricant, it doesn't have a problem with fire, like petroleum based. And the silicone lubricant, it, it uh, goes really good on any type of O-ring. So this stuff I keep in my tool bag. I use it all the time. Excellent stuff. Some of you guys that do ventilators and some other stuff like uh, centrifuges, this is a uh, high viscosity grease made by Dow Corning. And this stuff is absolutely fantastic. We used to use it all the time for the buckets in centrifuges because it's a uh, high viscosity grease. You can see it's, it's really thick stuff. And take a look, really thick grease. But this stuff is good around water sources. I've used this on everything from faucets and stuff where you got an O-ring that you don't want water to wash it away. This is a very good grease for uh, even a protective surface. So if there's, a, if there's a lot of impact on a surface, I'll use this type of grease in a real thin amount. Excellent stuff. It doesn't leave a mess like a lot of other greases because it's semi-clear. I highly recommend that. Dow Corning 111 High Viscosity Grease and Sealant. One of my next favorite adhesives right here, weather stripping adhesive. Now I learned this trick from a long time ago from a senior biomed. This stuff is insane. It's such a good product. Let's see, wow. So it's got a really thin applicator tip and it comes out, it, it does stink, I'll admit, it stinks but it's, it comes out really, really thin and it's really messy, so I don't really wanna get it on my hands, but it, it kind of stretches and naturally just comes out of the tip right there. And it has a very quick cure time. So if you have an object that doesn't really glue down too well, you can, I really don't use super glue. You'll notice I have no super glue here because weather stripping adhesive is so much stronger. It's it's stronger than using silicone and it creates a very permanent bond that is such a pain in the butt to undo if you ever have to undo it. But if you're adhering two surfaces together and you want it to be chemical resilient, water resilient, whatever, weather stripping adhesive. This stuff is absolutely awesome. Highly recommend you guys use it. RTV silicone sealant. Now this stuff right here, every biomed should have a stash of this someplace. Now, not, not just like your lubricants and your alcohol and Loctite. This stuff, RTV, has so many uses. You notice I have a black RTV and I have clear. For obvious professional reasons, aesthetics, etc. They, they do the same job. They're waterproof, they're an adhesive. It's a flexible seal and it cures rather quickly. So, RTV guys. And here's one of the things that you might not know about RTV. Let's say you have a device that has a water or a bubble detector and you wanna test the device. You can see this is a piece that comes from a level one rapid infuser. And you can see here in the tube, I have RTV silicone up in the tube where the bubble detect is. I do that because if you have water inside the tube, it eventually gets gunky and it looks horrible. This one here, I've got rubbing alcohol inside it and down at the base, I have uh, RTV silicone where the, where the bubble detector is. I learned this trick from a senior level biomed a long time ago on infusion pumps 
because infusion pumps always have a bubble detector and uh, the techs were going ahead and putting silicone in the tubing sets to simulate uh, a tubing set that has liquid inside it. And I've been using that technique ever since. I've got test sets for Belmont, for level one rapid infusers, uh, for infusion pumps. I have all sorts of stuff where we put clear silicone in the tube to simulate water because if you keep water stagnant inside something, it will eventually go bad. It gets cloudy, just garbage, just a little bit of silicone in the tube and uh, it's a permanent solution. This is a test jig. This will last for absolute years. Black. We use this for other things. Obviously, if you have black plastic or uh, surfaces that where the user will never see it, I use black silicone. Sometimes they give uh, the next tech that opens it up, hey, you know, there is something in there. Um, one of the examples I use silicone for is on drop tubes for OR lights. At the very end, there's usually a cap, and if, the, if those thread holes get stripped out, or if the cap gets destroyed in any way, shape, or form, and you have to keep going, you can't have an open um, orifice to the above ceiling, you have to have it capped off. So what we'll do is we'll go in with RTV, and this is where I use black RTV, is on the inside of that cap, we'll put black RTV, and when you press it up in there, and you let it cure overnight, it's a, I wanna say it's a permanent hold, and it, it basically is, but if you ever need to open that cap back up to get back up into the uh, access way, all you gotta do is stuff something in there and peel on the side, and the RTV will give way, whereas this stuff here will not. This stuff is very permanent. This stuff here you can redo, but the reason I have black instead of clear is because I had a situation years ago where I had vendors that came in and they worked on the above ceiling and I had the cap glued on with RTV because uh, the holes were stripped out completely. And if you use clear RTV on those caps, the vendors will sometimes come in, they'll peel it away. They know that there's RTV up in there, but since it's clear, it kind of just looks like there's nothing there. So I use black. It gives a very strong visual indicator that, hey, this is being held on with RTV. You need to put RTV back on it. Well, anyway, the way that story goes is I had a doctor who used a lot of profanity. He got very pissed off because I had a vendor that came in over the weekend. They peeled away at one of those end caps to the drop tube, and they just stuck it back up in there without using more RTV, and it fell off in the middle of a case. This doctor was insanely mad at me and I had nothing to do with it. I didn't even know I was going to have vendors come in that weekend and I used clear silicone. So from now on, whenever there's a possibility that you're going to have to redo it in the future, I put black silicone on there. That way there, you know, all the old material that you have to clean away to put new silicone on and to put it back up. But that's just a sampling of some of the chemicals that I use day in and day out guys they all have excellent uses some uses you wouldn't even think of but we learned from other technicians so that's all i got for you at the moment it's just a real quick breakdown of some of the chemicals that i use i use these every day guys and they're safe i don't care what what other people say about you know open flame in a, in a hospital or whatever i'm not being unsafe guys i have fire extinguishers and water sources right here and it's not like I'm doing it while a patient's in the room. So, And yes, all these chemicals can be found with their MSDS online. Uh, I know maybe they don't even call it MSDS anymore. That's, that's a whole nother video. These guys in rebranding garbage like MSDS and, you know, HTM, just rebranding garbage. Uh, I don't support that. So we'll get into that in some other video. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Hope you all enjoy your Friday. I know I will. I got to work tomorrow on Saturday because ORs run all the time, man. We got to get to those PMs, right? So you guys have a good weekend.